Hey, what's up guys? So the new Cyber Dark stuff finally came out and I haven't heard anyone talking about it and I think it's got some potential here. So anyways, in a nutshell, this whole deck is all about equipping. I'll show you guys some gameplay footage, but I want to briefly explain what the heck's going on because it's going to be really fast. And uh, anyways, so basically the legacy support is just monsters that are Cyber Dark. And what they do is when they're a normal summon, you get to select a level 3 or lower dragon type monster graveyard and you get to equip it to it. And they have little bonus effects, some of them do piercing, uh, but for the most part they can actually protect themselves by destroying the equip card instead. And then the uh, newer stuff, uh, again, the older stuff is just pretty much, it's a cyber dark, you get to equip stuff. That's really what it comes down to. They all have little bonus effects, but again, it's pretty small, like piercing and stuff like that. But um, the cyber dark cannon is one of the newer cards. There's only two new cards that we're running right here in this build uh, for the monster lineup. But anyways, cyber dark cannon has the ability to... Um, it has three effects, but anyways, if the card is sent to the graveyard while equipped to a monster, you can draw a card. Uh, you can only use each effect of it once per turn. That actually is actually on both of the effects, uh, where you can only use uh, one of these effects per turn. But anyways, Cannon has the ability to give you a free draw. You can discard the card, add a Cyber Dark Machine type monster from your deck to your hand, and then if this card battles uh, while it's e as an equip, you get to uh, send one monster from your uh, deck to the graveyard. Just any monster it doesn't have to be cyber dark which is actually really really potentially good uh because you can go wolf i mean there's a, there's a lot of potential combos with this and then on top of that we have a cyber dark claw so this one has the ability to when it's sent uh while it is equipped you get to target a cyber dark monster in your graveyard and add it back to your hand and then uh it has two other abilities so the first one is you can discard to add a cyber dark spell and trap so this one searches the monsters this one searches the spell and traps and then, if this one uh, is equipped and it's battling uh, a monster, the monster that is equipped to it, you get to actually send a monster from your extra, which actually allows you to equip Quasar, and then also potentially get out a Shooting Star, which is actually pretty big. And on top of that, you can go for the uh, newer card, Elder Entity in Chest, and you can actually just pop a card. So there's a lot of potential with this. Heck, I was thinking about using Miracle Synchro Fusion with this deck. Uh, to actually go off and make things that your opponent wouldn't even see because you just start sending stuff from your uh, extract to the graveyard. It's not like you really need to uh, run some of the stuff and Miracle Sync Fusion can make some pretty nasty combos. But anyways, I'll go over the deck profile more in depth but I just kind of want to give you guys a brief introduction to the deck. Oh, the last new card that we're going to be going over is Cyber Dark uh, Inferno before we go over the place. But anyways, it's a field spell that says your opponent can't target the Cyber Dark effect monsters you control equipped with equip cards with card effects. And they can't be destroyed by opponent's card effects. And then on top of that, you can target a Cyber Dark monster you control, bounce it back, and then you can normal summon again. Uh, and then on top of that, if this card you control is destroyed by opponent's card effect, you get add a Polymerization or a Fusion spell card from your hand. And this one doesn't even have the you can't search the Fusion Wave motion, which is probably irrelevant. But I figure I'd mention that because it's like one of those like except Frog the Jam cards. But anyways. Like I said, I wanted to show it in action, so uh, let's go ahead and check it out. And I think it's actually pretty decent. Uh, the first one is uh, facing off against the new Ancient Gear deck. That's also something uh, that some players are messing around with. And we'll see which one is the dominant machine deck. I feel like the Cyberdarks, again, they have a little bit of potential here. Now, we do see a Future Fusion here, but it, it's irrelevant. I know people say, if you open up Future Fusion, it's broken. It's not as good anymore, guys. It's still good. I would still play it in the deck, but you have to wait for it to actually be active. So we see a... Uh, Ghost Ash stopping the trade in so he gets to go plus one with that. He's gonna go ahead and stop the Wyvern. He still has a Regeki in his hand. He's got the Ancient Gear Catapult. Um, so, Future Fusion, you have to wait to send the stuff and then you have to wait during the second standby phase. Um, and then you can uh, eventually maybe get your thing. It, it, it really is hard to go for it right now. But you guys can see he's already sent the Shooting Quasar Dragon to the graveyard. His opponent's gonna go ahead and actually go for the Ancient Gear uh, Reactor Dragon, he's going to go ahead and still be able to send it in chess to the graveyard, getting rid of his opponent's cards. But you, you'd be thinking, how is he going to win with a Cyber Dark Keel on board? Well, he sacks him because it's a fusion deck. Overload Fusion, pretty good card. But keep in mind, a lot of the stuff, again, can recycle and search out the other. One of them searches out the monsters. The monster can search out uh, the other uh, spell traps. So it's not like he really sacked him at the end of the day. Uh, because there's a lot of cards that can search out the fusion stuff, especially even this stuff. Uh, but anyways, you guys can see he's he played a, he played it really well over there. He was able to get rid of his opponent's entire board. Regeki is then activated. This is a pretty hype game over here. 200 life points from Zaki Maglucius, the creator of this deck. Shoutouts to him. Uh, really awesome build. And like I said, we'll go over the deck profile after this. He draws a D barrier, but Silver Guy just only got uh, 1,500 attack points. He top decks and goes into Gear Town. And he's going to attack. He's got 100 life points versus 200. It is pretty dang close. 
Uh, but then he's got the Cyber Dark Impact. He's gonna go ahead and special summon Cyber Dark Dragon, getting Quasar Dragon from his graveyard and just equipping it to it. So I believe this card would proc its effect. It's just when this card leaves the field, you can just special summon it, uh, shooting Star Dragon from her extract. I think that's why he's playing it. Um, but anyways, uh, this next duel is, it's actually pretty decent. Like, I haven't seen anyone play vampires in forever, but, um, it shows the vampires aren't like, um, it's not like a very meta deck, but I feel like against some of these other, uh, decks, it's not like terrible. It's not like ice barriers, all right, you know? <laughs> but, uh, anyways, so he's got a D-Barrier, he's got Cyber Dark Inferno, he's gonna go ahead and search out some cards. Keel's gonna go ahead and equip this. And again, he's able to just go ahead and send whatever he wants uh, to the graveyard. And since he destroyed this, he's going to be able to add a fusion. Uh, really, really good stuff over here. But uh, again, uh, the vampires, uh, they were, I think, a really like an exceed-oriented deck. But the D-Bearer is going to go ahead and permit him from going for the, uh, what is it, the vampire? This guy over here. They, they always make this guy. Uh, the Crimson Knight Vampire Bram. That guy is like one of the, one of the best cards in the vampires. I mean... Rank 5 are still pretty decent in the game, also. But anyways, he's going to go ahead and attack into him. He's going to send in chest, and he's going to get rid of that uh, field spell, because that field spell can cause some problems uh, by just forcing him to uh, get rid of some cards. But he's going to go ahead and summon it again, putting it back the Mizuki's, activating Mizuki's effect again. He's going to go for the Sorcerer, and he's going to go straight to the battle phase. He's going to go ahead and send another in chest, and then get rid of the field spell over there. But uh, I'm surprised he didn't uh, try to go for more plays after that. But nonetheless, he's going to go ahead and send Quasar to the graveyard. He's going to go ahead and activate the uh, Vampire Sorcerer's effect over there. He's got a Mizuki on board. And he's going to go ahead and activate the Kingdom, putting himself in the defense of posture right now. But uh, really good to be able to bounce back things. It just helps you get things in the graveyard and just kind of reset stuff. And then he's going to go for the Cyber Dark Dragon. Once again, getting the Quasar Dragon equipped to it. And he's going to just be able to pop stuff. It just seems like a very aggressive deck over here. He goes for the Spirit Reaper. It could be used for stalling. But remember, guys, uh, the Cyber Darks, they do have a bonus effect. Uh, one of them can attack directly, one of them does piercing, and it actually works out here, which is kind of funny because, again, the legacy support is, like, attacking directly, it's piercing. I didn't think it would ever really come in handy because, let's be honest, it, it doesn't happen too often that you see an opponent with, like, a Marshmallow in, like, defense mode. Like, back in the day, like, Spirit Reaper, Marshmallow, uh, they could be annoying at times, and, like, you'd have to wait to get over them, but, uh, this day and age, we have Castell, we have so many other things, but... Uh, yeah, putting it in defense mode, not the uh, smartest. Well, he didn't really do anything regardless. Uh, he, he was just in a bad position over here. But uh, yeah, like I said, we go over the deck profile real quick over here. So let's go ahead and go into the deck edit here. So like I said, the, the legacy support is like, it's just kind of there as equips. I, I know we, we got to see attack directly and do piercing, but for the most part, it's pretty irrelevant uh, in this day and age as far as meta goes in the game. And I feel like this deck has a little bit of pendulum. Keep in mind, guys, that Allure of Darkness is at three in the TCG. Uh, heck, I don't think that there's a card that you really need in the deck. Um, I, I would even put uh, the uh, Pot of Desires in here just to make the deck even faster because you have a lot of good options just for some really powerful equips. Um, and also just sending stuff from the extra to the graveyard. Like I said, I want to build this deck uh, I'll probably stream it uh, this weekend because uh, this is a really cool idea to mix in Miracle Synchro Fusion with some of the stuff that's in the graveyard. But uh, anyways, so we got two copies of the older Cyber Dark Keel. So Keel has the ability, uh, oh, all of them have this effect where they get to, when they're normal summon, you get to select a level 3 or lower uh, Dragon type monster and you equip it to it. And then if it would be destroyed, you can destroy the equip instead. But Keel has the ability to, uh, if it destroys an opponent's monster uh, by battle, you get to burn them for 300. It's probably the worst. Uh, Horn has the ability to do piercing. And then uh, Edge has the ability to attack directly. Uh, so uh, there's two copies of Keel, three copies of Horn, and two copies of Edge. Again, most of them are pretty irrelevant uh, for their effects, but I, I definitely think two and two and then three of uh, this guy is better. Because I think Piercing is better uh, for the most part. I mean, I, I think I'd, I'd go over, I'd run three Edge over running Keel. Because, like, realistically, you're not going to be able to destroy something by battle um, too often. I mean, I know you can equip... Uh, some really good stuff to him, like Quasar, but you can't equip it to the smaller ones. Uh, that's only for the bigger, uh, the bigger guys. The uh, smaller ones, they can only equip by three alarms. So the, the chances of you getting like really good damage, eh, it's not too common. Uh, but it can happen, and 300 is still 300, right? 
Uh, next up, we got three copies of the new Dark Cannon as well as the Claw. So remember, this one searches out the uh, Cyber Dark Machine monsters. So uh, keep in mind, you cannot go for Cannon into Claw because these are Dragon. These have to search out the Cyber Dark Machine monsters. And at the moment, the Legacy stuff, again, uh, it's not like super strong. So I want to say that you're probably going to get more. I mean, we only have, I think, th like, th what, three cards? I guess four if you count the uh, extra deck. Uh, and the Cyber, Cyber Dark, if I could spell, Cyber Dark. Is it one word? It kind of, Cyber Dark is one word, okay. Uh, Cyber Dark, in, in the archetype, again, we're using all of the stuff here because there's not really anything <laughs> at the moment. Uh, we even saw this guy in the, the replays. I'll go over this effect too, I should probably go over him. But yeah, anyways, uh, we got three Ghost Ash. It's really common, it's, I know it's an expensive card, but it, it's really good in every deck. And interesting to see some Ghost Reapers. In the OCG, a few weeks back, I was seeing some decks. They're actually just uh, side decking uh, multiple cards. Because it still is good, you know, against Treat Toad. Really just strong card overall. Next up, we got uh, three cards of Allure, three Overload, one Raigeki, one Cyber Dark Impact. We got two Dualities, uh, two copies of Twin Twisters, one Future Fusion. The Field Spell lets you search out a card if it's destroyed. Uh, they make, make so your opponent can't destroy them and it cannot target them uh, as long as they have an equip. Then you got the Triple D Barriers and Triple Solemn Strike. As far as the extra goes, two copies of the new Cyber Darkness Dragon. So. Uh, this one just lets you equip, uh, again, the uh, bigger ones let you equip any dragon uh, from your graveyard to it, and then it gains attack equal to the original attack. Both of them actually have that uh, effect, but um, the Cyber Darkness, the new guy over here, has the ability during either player's turn when your opponent does anything, you get to send an equip card, negate the activation, and destroy it, so you get to stop anything. Um, and that is not just a once per turn. You could, if you have multiple equips to it, go for it, man, negate for days. Uh, then the, the older Legacy uh, Fusion card, which is the Cyber Dark Dragon, it requires Horn, uh, Edge, and Keel, whereas the new one is just five Cyber Dark effect monsters. It's not really picky on it. But anyways, um, so you just select an equip, and then it gains attack. And then this card gains 100 attack for each monster card in your graveyard. Potentially, if you have a lot in your graveyard, I guess it could get boosted up pretty good. Uh, but if it would be destroyed by battle, the equip card is destroyed instead. I think this card is pretty much overall better, but uh, maybe you don't have five, so you can go for this with the uh, whole like other fusion cards. Uh, next up, you got the Buster Dragon. Uh, some of these cards, keep in mind, guys, are for the Ghost Reaper. Like you're not actually going to be making this. Uh, but next up, we have uh, three copies of the Elder God in chess. Uh, we got the Quasar, the Shooting Star, Omega. Uh, all these cards, guys, are pretty much just used for the Ghost Reaper. So keep that in mind. You're not going to be busting out no Treat Toad on them uh, in this deck. Uh, and then these these are cards I think he was trying out before in uh, an earlier build, but I guess he just didn't uh, prefer them. But uh, yeah, that is the whole Cyberdark archetype, and I think it's, it's, I know it's early on, but sometimes people like to see it early on, and I think it's not bad. Uh, I think that this deck has a lot of potential, because this card, I mean, it, it can negate anything, you know, and if there's any other cards, it'll just let you, like, equip a bunch of cards to it. Uh, I mean, Noble Knights, where you at? Is this, is this Noble Knights 2.0? You just equip a bunch of cards to it. But uh, I think that this deck has a little bit of potential. So if you guys have some of these older cards, I mean, they're probably like 10 cents right now. If they come out with like no new cards uh, for like the like the, the Cyberdark Machine ones and everything that's new is just equipped, these could be like $2, $3 cards. And, you know, if you invest, you know, properly in it, you can make, you know, some money. If you if you buy it like 100 plus and they each go to like 2 to $3 a piece, you're looking at a good profit. So... There you guys go. And before there's new support that makes these completely irrelevant, but if they're only like 10 cents each, it's not a bad investment. Like if you get like, you know, 10 of them for a dollar and you sell, you know, 10 of them for $3, hey, you got yourself some uh, profit there. You get some, um, some auto holes uh, or something uh, along the lines of that. But anyways, boys, thanks for watching guys. And, uh, if you enjoyed the vid, oh, shout out to Maglucius for this awesome deck. I, I like it. It was good. Now, no one's sending me dark, cyber dark uh, games, so like, I think that was cool. I'll probably play this deck this weekend, and I'll try to make it with uh, the whole Miracle Synchro feature. We'll, we'll try some crazy stuff on the live stream. If you guys aren't following me on Twitch, link down below in the description box. But anyways, boys, thanks for watching, guys. And if you enjoyed the vid, make sure you guys get a like button, a slap a Reno, and hit that subscribe button for more Fidget Spinner videos.